Well, we are happy to welcome to the program today the Treasury Board President, Mona Fautier. Madam Fautier, thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me. Listen, now we've been mulling over the deal ever since it was announced, and we're looking at these wage increases. We've seen from, from you know, the government perspective, the ability to keep telework out of the collective agreement, mm -hmm. the tentative agreement as, uh, as such. Mm -hmm. So when you look at it, is this a win for the government? I think it's a win for Canadians. I think it's a win for public servants. And I believe that we found uh, the right balance to a fair, uh, competitive and uh, reasonable uh, deal. And uh, I'm glad actually that uh, we announced uh, that we have a four year uh, deal, which gives uh, really some stability uh, for the public service. And also uh, we have a line of sight on mm -hmm. uh, what's next. Well, when you say the balance, I, I know that there's the, the number balance that you're looking at as well as how you how you meet the, the demands being made by the union. But as one that really was overseeing the negotiations from the government mm -hmm. side, what achieves balance for you? What defines that for you? So imagine when we started, 570 demands on the table. That's why I, I think that we had a lot of work done. Um, and uh, we started last year, and unfortunately, after our first offer, a PSAC chose to leave the table. And it took up until, I'll say, January, February, to kind of get back to, the, are we ready to have, you know, back to the deal and we chose mediation and that's why April 2nd we started again. And uh, I, both teams work really, really hard and I think there was a lot uh, that we needed to make sure we were looking uh, at a good uh, increase uh, for public servants, but also there were different issues that were being dealt with. And now uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to report that there is balance, there is um, stability, and uh, I think the responsibility that I had as president of the Treasury Board is to make sure that it was a win-win a, a for public servants, but also for Canadians, and that was my focus uh, the whole time. Well, you, you talk about what you consider a fair wage increase for, for a, you know, the employees of the federal government, but from the onset, they were making the argument, the union making the argument that really what their workers want to do was make sure their salaries were keeping up with inflation. Mm -hmm. Now, you didn't meet their demand as they defined inflation. And I wonder uh, about the philosophy behind that, because here we are in a country where there is this increasing wage mm -hmm. gap mm -hmm. between the top earners and the middle earners, mm -hmm. not to mention low income earners. Mm -hmm. Was that not a consideration? If the members are concerned about inflation, the cost of living, and making sure they're not falling behind. Was that not a priority for you? Well, the first thing is as the largest employer of Canada, I had to make sure that we had uh, a balance. And if you look at other provinces of what they have as negotiation or agreements with their public servants, how also, uh, you know, the private sector, we had to balance things. And when we started, we were in a certain position. And then uh, the Public Interest Commission shared on February 17th their report, which recommended, you know, the the the, the nine percent over uh, three years, which at the time wasn't three three three. Some mm -hmm. people thought it was that, but it was one point five, four point five, and and three. I think my math is good. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, and and we were following, you know, uh, mm -hmm. the inflation, but. Um, not the, the same amount, but we had to make sure that we were also looking at what was happening on the ground across the, pro, uh, across the country. So we found that middle ground and we also offered uh, during the mediation uh, the, uh, in line with the recommendation of the Public Interest Commission, which is a third party uh, mm -hmm. that had studied it and recommended us to go there. So we did. And then um, I think that we, and that's where I think both uh, win uh, on the fourth year, uh, the idea of getting that stability, which also aligns with the inflation uh, going down. Mm -hmm. So I think that we have uh, the right place and I believe that uh, public servants should be uh, happy with uh, this uh, 
tentative deal. They yeah. need to ratify it, of course, but uh, looking forward uh, to see uh, the ratification. Okay, so reflective of what is out in the environment. I I'm wondering then from the other perspective, because again, telework is not part of this collective agreement, but you've essentially committed uh, managers within the government to, to speak to individual employees and their requests and to balance out the requests to work from home. And, and the federal government, the at, uh, well, upwards of yeah, sorry, telework up is not just a question of working from home. I think we have to think that it's more. Uh, you can be working from another uh, office, uh, another destination. It's. I think that where a lot want to, of course, uh, work from home, they have and they will continue to do so up to three days uh, a week. The telework directive has not been revised since 1993. So that's what we're committing to. Work with the union to look at, let's revise this telework directive and put it up to date to post-pandemic, uh, let's say, era. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what we will be doing. And also we chose, uh, because there's different departments, they work differently, the culture of the team, uh, the services they offer, to have a mechanism that will enable uh, somebody from the union and the manager to discuss and look at preoccupations to see if there's a better outcome. But it's non-grievable. It's just to try to find solutions because we're discovering this telework post-pandemic, and I think there's different opportunities to uh, to welcome but, but those the, conversations. Which, which uh, I, I take it because the nature of the work is changing, but mm -hmm. you have set this benchmark now where your employees, those attached with the PSAC, can, can telework upwards of three days a week. Mm -hmm. Have you set perhaps a difficult precedent for private industry? Because if that is what such a large public sector employer is giving to their employees, have you not essentially painted private companies into providing the same for their employees? No, I would challenge the fact that actually uh, we looked at what's happening in the private sector, look at what's happening in other provinces, and we are, you know, uh, really looking at the, an average of what uh, the private sector for many companies are doing and also uh, the public sector in, in other provinces and even municipalities. Now, we know that many frontline workers will work uh, in, uh, you know, the workplace, uh, and we have to respect that. I think that we have an opportunity to look at the best of both worlds. What can be done working either from home or for remote work, or again, uh, what can be done in the office. And there are those benefits that will, at the end of the day, make sure that we offer the best services to Canadians. And I think that's the balance that we're trying to find. Okay, I have less than a minute, but mm -hmm. I do have to ask you, because you yourself noted during your news conference yesterday that this negotiation with the PSAC is just one of many yes. to come. So does this deal establish a baseline for other negotiations? The, the telework aspect, the, 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 the essentially the, the, the line in terms of percentage increase, is this now the deal that you're going to bring to the other unions as well? I, I believe so. So we had two done before, one in November and the other one uh, just shy of beginning of April. And uh, now with these four, we're, we're, we have a trend line, I think, that is uh, demonstrating it's over 120,000 workers for the four we just signed. And then before it was around 8,000 when you put it all together. So it gives a, a good trend uh, to continue. And I believe that it's a fair, uh, reasonable uh, deal that is there and also respectful of uh, the process that we've just been through. Bonaforte, really appreciate the time and uh, congratulations you. by, uh, it's now over, at least this part well, for you. Well, that part. There's 20 more to do, though. <laughs> thank you so, so we'll much. Be, we'll be in connection, <laughs> yes, so, but, but thank you for that. Thank you.